Hello the internet and welcome back to my channel. It failed again. I should probably make a series of these videos because uh, the first one was the Apple to Europe Plus, which I had to repair again after it failed again after my first repair was a different fault. And uh, now we got the Acorn CRT monitor, which I repaired in this video. And these unfortunately failed only a few hours after it was powered up. Now, my previous repair, I replaced the flyback transformer. I have no idea whether the same component failed or whether it's something else. So I would say, let's take a look and see if we can refix it. Now, before we begin with CRTs, always a little disclaimer, CRTs are dangerous. They can retain voltage even when they're powered off. The CRT is basically a big capacitor. So if you don't know what you're doing, just stay away from CRTs. Don't open them up, don't touch them, don't do anything with them. Just leave it to someone who knows what he's doing. Do you know what you're doing? Um, well, not really. Then why are you touching a CRT? I don't know. Okay, well, first thing first, let's see what this monitor is doing. Last time, as I said, it was the flyback transformer. Uh, I could hear these um, whiny noise coming from the monitor and that's usually a shorted uh, flyback transformer. Now, I didn't show that on camera last time, but uh, this is the uh, power supply board, the main power supply. We've got 220 coming in and a number of voltages, DC voltages coming out. And last time I could see that these voltages were actually um, not reaching the nominal values as if something was shorted after the transformer. So the transformer obviously was protecting itself. Now I haven't checked the voltages this time. I haven't done many checks on this one. So let's do this together. Okay, I've got the monitor plugged into my isolation transformer and uh, I have disconnected here the degaussing coil uh, simply because the degaussing coil is like a momentary short and that my isolation transformer and current limiter won't like it, uh, but it's totally fine. So let's power it up and let's see what it does. Okay, let's power up in three, two, one, go. Okay, I don't hear high frequency at all. I haven't got an input on the monitor, but if I turn up the brightness, I should see the raster and it looks like the tube is completely switched off. Now, what I got here is a spectrum analyzer. Spectrum analyzer is simple software, uh, drawing, plotting the frequencies from uh, uh, low frequencies on the left to high frequencies on the right on the screen. And I understand that if the horizontal transistor is working, which is critical, for the operation of a monitor, I should see a 15 kilohertz peak up around here because I think the end of the scale is 16 kilohertz. So the monitor is switched off now. Let's switch it on and see if we can read anything around the uh, upper end of the spectrum. Three, two, one, go. There's something at 18 kilohertz, I'm not sure what it is, but there is a peak at 15.3 kilohertz, which I believe is correct. So that might tell me that the transistor is working and maybe the flyback is not shorted, at least at the transistor's end, but I'm not sure. I'm not a massive expert when it comes to CRTs. Uh, the fact that I don't have high frequency, at least I, I can't hear it, is kind of weird because uh, if you have the 15 kilohertz, it means the transistor is working and at that point it should just be a matter of the flyback transformer to generate the, the high voltage. So right off the bat, I would say maybe the flyback has failed, but I'm not sure yet. Let's keep trying and let's keep troubleshooting. The next step is to check the voltages and according to the schematics, it's outputting 15.5, 26.5 and 125 volts. The 125 volt is the one going to the flyback transformer. Last time they were more or less halved. All of them were like half the voltage, uh, indicating that it was a short somewhere. But with the power supply disconnected from the rest of the monitor, the voltages were totally fine. So there was definitely something after that and it turned out to be the flyback. So I'm going to check these voltages. I'm going to power up the monitor again now and uh, then I'm going to check these voltages. Aha! Uh -huh. So my 125 is now 56. So there is another short again. My 26 is 11, so it's again, it's halved. And my other voltage, which is 15, is 6.8. So, so far, this looks like exactly the same fault that we had last time. 
So what seems to be happening here is that there is a short somewhere around the board and uh, the, the power supply is protecting itself. Let's double check that. I have temporarily disconnected the output of the power supply that goes to the rest of the monitor. So now the power supply is completely independent. It's not connected to absolutely anything. It's just a power supply. So let's see if the voltages are okay with just the power supply connected. Okay, let's power up now. As you can see, the higher voltages goes up to what it's supposed to be. I think the schematic says 125, but obviously this is fine. Uh, 25, again, that's totally fine. And this should be 15 point something. 16.9 is totally fine. So the power supply seems to be fine unless it dies when it has a load. I don't know. I would say, considering it's, it's a CRT monitor, the next step would be to check that um, horizontal transistor and then the flyback itself. Always remember to discharge a CRT before touching anything, especially around the flyback transformer. Even though the CRT, I couldn't hear the uh, high voltage, so chances are it's not charged, but it takes a second. And always remember to discharge it towards the uh, metal ring around the CRT and nothing else. This is the horizontal transistor. Now, my very basic understanding of how a flyback works is that it more or less works like a switching power supply. So this uh, transistor is chopping the 125 volts that we've measured on the power supply. It gets into the transformer and then transformer is generating multiple voltages, which in this case are higher than the um, source voltage rather than lower. So the 15 kilohertz is just the chopping frequency of the horizontal transistor. Now, the fact that we could hear, or at least the RTA could hear that 15 kilohertz, to me means that the transistor is working. But anyways, you know, it doesn't cost time, too much time to check for shorts or anything. Anything. I'm in diode mode. Now we have kind of a short in here. However, if I move to resistor, I think it's reading something which is not zero. It's reading six ohms and I need to check on the schematics, but I had the same result last time. It looked like there was a short, but no, there is a six ohm resistor somewhere. So it's kind of, well, it is normal to read six ohm, which obviously will make the multimeter beeping when in diode mode. Okay, so I don't see anything weird besides that six ohm between base and emitter. Let's double check the schematics to confirm that there is something causing that six ohm between uh, uh, emitter and base. Well, schematics are showing the R466, which is 68 ohms, but then there's also R465, which is the one that you see on screen now, which is supposed to be a 3.3 ohms, but I'm reading six. Now, obviously it's in circuit, so the voltage is going all over the place, but the bottom line is there is a low ohm resistance there, and I feel that six ohm is probably totally fine, and that's my why my multimeter is beeping in diode mode. Right, I've got my thermal camera out and uh, I'm going to check this PCB and see if I can find anything getting hot. I will focus my attention on the horizontal transistor, which is this little guy here. And, uh, you know, if that doesn't get really hot, I'll have a look around and we'll see what happens. Okay, ready to power up in three, two, one, go. Okay, well, the transistor is getting lukewarm, but no, I mean, it's not scorching hot. Uh, oh, well, there's something here going up to 120, 30. Oh, wow. Okay. And uh, that is like a high wattage resistor, but I would say, let's turn it off. <laughs> it's 160, 160 degrees. I would say that's not expected to be so hot. Uh, there is another high watt resist resistor here. That one I might expect to get really hot because it's uh, pretty much separated from the PCB. That's a five watt resistor, so it's definitely supposed to dissipate up to five watts. But this little one here, I think on the schematics, it says one watt, so I can see that. And you wouldn't expect to get to 160 degrees. 160 degrees, there's something wrong with that. Also, I don't see any damage on the PCB. If a resistor like that was normally very hot, like by design, you would see the PCB getting like brown or yellowish. And I don't see that, that, that kind of damage on this PCB. So that looks like it's, uh, it's overheating for some reasons. Uh, but I don't think it's the resistor. I think it's something 
after the resistor which has shorted, which is causing that problem. Now that is the resistor in question. It says 15K, even though uh, it's difficult to show you, but the, the PCB says R475 and R475, according to the schematics I've got, should be a 3.3, but there is another resistor nearby, which is R476, which is 15K. So maybe there is a mistake on the PCB also. I can see that this is supposed to be probably like a transistor and it's labeled R something. So that can't be an R, it's just not a resistor. It looks like, again, a transistor. So I don't know, but it's a 15K, it's definitely not a 3.3K. Uh, what I can do, we can check that it's actually reading 15K. Uh, even though, again, I don't, I don't think that could be the cause of our problem, but you know, let's begin with measuring what the resistor is um, is reading on my Muscamisa. Well, it's actually reading 15k, so it looks like, as I supposed, uh, there's nothing wrong with that resistor. It's something after the resistor which is shorted, and by looking at the schematics, this is very closely connected to the high voltage section of the uh, flyback itself. That's kind of concerning that it looks like there might be a fault with the high voltage generation of the flyback itself. Now what you see here is the big 5 watts resistor, which is on the big on the long legs. Um, it's getting up to 50, 60 degrees. I'm totally not concerned about that. That's definitely supposed to be that temperature. That is fine. While if I'm looking at this resistor, it's switched off now, so it's cooling down. Uh, 120 degrees cannot be right. Uh, there must be a short somewhere after or before the resistor. Now, the next step I'd like to try is my new ring tester, which I built exactly to troubleshoot this monitor. Now, this is my brand new ring tester. I built it myself. The project is available from Bob Parker's webpage. I think it's from Australia. Bob has a much fancier version of this one, which is on sale, but he kindly decided to design uh, like a simpler version, which is this one which is available for everybody to download and, and build at home. Now, how do you build this? Obviously, you can Ooh. buy all the components. The list of the components is on the website. When it comes to the PCB, well, PCB way comes to help. What you need is a Gerber file. The Gerber file is available on the project for downloading. And then you go on pcbway.com, upload the Gerber file onto the system, and you're more or less done. The system is completely automatic. You can tweak things, but you don't have to. And uh, all you need to do is to select a postal service, uh, complete the order, and PCBWay will deliver the PCBs at your place. I've always been happy with the quality of the PCBs I've received from PCB Way. This is not the first project I've done on this channel. If you follow me, you know that I've done a few. This is one of them. It's my XTID. It's been working totally fine. I feel I'm uh, more than happy to recommend PCB Way for the quality of the products. And don't forget that PCB Way is not just the PCBs. Uh, other services they offer is uh, 3D printing and metal sheet fabrication. Take a look at PCBWay.com. The link is also down below in the description. Let let me thank PCBWay for sponsoring this channel. Their help is invaluable. They make these videos possible. Now, why do I need a ring tester? And most importantly, what is a ring tester? Now, a transformer, if you think about it, is just a long wire uh, wound up around um, a core, some sort of a core. Now, it's um, effectively a short. So if you test it with your multimeter in resistance mode, you read a short. Now, if your winding is open, surely enough, your multimeter can tell you whether the winding is open. But especially in this case, we are reading a short somewhere, or we think there is a short. And what can happen is that out of all those windings inside the transformer, some of them are shorted together, they're touching together. So the voltage that comes into the transformer, instead of running through, say, a thousand windings, is running through, I don't know, 500 or 10 windings. And that, from an electronic perspective, is a short. Now, if you're using your multimeter on a flyback transformer, which is internally shorted, well, it still reads a short. It's a different short. Uh, I don't know whether the multimeter would be able to give you a slightly different reading, but it's still a short. It doesn't really help much knowing that it's a slightly different short as it's supposed to be. And here comes the ring tester. Now, the ring tester is using a physical property of these high voltage transformers, which is common with inductors. And the idea is that the ring tester will inject a very short pulse 
into the winding and if the winding is okay, if the transformer is okay, this pulse will ring a number of times, a pretty high number of times, before it gets under uh, a, a threshold where the ring tester will stop counting. Now I have two digits here and that will count up to 99. If it counts 99, it means that after the pulse, there were 99 echoes, let's call them that way, or rings coming back from the transformer. Now, if the transformer is shorted or even worse, open, there won't be any rings or there will be not many rings. Uh, that means there is a short inside and it could be on the winding which I'm testing, but it could also be on a secondary winding because that secondary winding will interfere with the primary winding because, uh, you know, it's still um, magnetically they're all connected together. Now, enough me talking, let's test this thing because I happen to have a broken flyback transformer, but I also happen to have a working flyback transformer from the Apple monitor that we tried to fix in this video. So let's see how the ring tester works. Right, so this is the working flyback transformer that I got from the Apple monitor. Let's plug the ring tester on the, what I think is the primary coil. That's the one that gets the high voltage from the power supply. And you can see that the ring tester is reading 99. That means that this flyback is working. You don't have to test all the windings. If the primary is working, it means the secondary is working as well. 99, 100% means that this one is working. Now, this is the faulty flyback from this very monitor that I replaced on my previous video. And let's see how much it reads on uh, the primary coil. So as you can see, it's only reading 11. I know this is faulty, it's totally consistent, consistent, and it means that this flyback is definitely faulty. And just to prove my point, I've got the multimeter in resistance mode. Let's check the working flyback. It's reading one ohm, and obviously it's reading a short. And uh, now let's check the faulty flyback from this very monitor, 1.3 ohms. But obviously this is not working and this is working. So as you can see, the multimeter is really pretty much useless at testing these things. Now, what I'd like to do now, I'd like to check the flyback transformer in circuit on the monitor itself. Uh, let's see what number it gets and uh, maybe we will need to remove it to check it out of the PCB, out of the circuit. Okay, well, I'm getting 18. I would say, you know, if this was out of circuit, I think 18 means it's not good um, because it's in circuit. I can't be sure. So I would like to remove the flyback again and uh, test it out of circuit. Okay, well, the flyback is out. Let's use the ring tester again to test the primary coil of this flyback. Oh, aha! Uh -huh. The flyback says it's okay, because 99 means 99 rings, which means, or should mean, at least for the capability of this tool, that the flyback is working. Um, interesting, I was expecting something completely different. Okay, now one thing I can check to test this, uh, this outcome is to short one of the secondaries. It's, as I said before, the fact that the primary is reading 99 should mean that the entire transformer is healthy. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna short one of the windings of the secondary. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, as you can see, if, if the secondary is shorted, then the primary doesn't read correct anymore. So, um, good, uh, this is like a plot twist. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Now, we know there is a short, and uh, obviously, again, the ring tester doesn't test these 100 volts, there's no high voltage involved, there's a number of things that the ring tester could still miss. But, right off the bat, this is telling me the flyback is not our problem, at least for now. I've got the ring tester connected to the working transformer, which is confirmed by this 99 number, and I've got the oscilloscope connected to the same circuit, so we can try and visualize what the ring tester is doing to test the flyback. Now, if we take a look at the oscilloscope, we see this, which is one of the pulses the ring tester is sending to the coils to test them. 
Now, if I'm switching to roll mode, you can actually see that the uh, ring tester is sending a number of pulses every second. There you go, you can see it's, um, I don't know, two or three pulses a second. And if I zoom in, these pulses look like this. So what the ring tester is doing is just sending one pulse and then counting all those little echoes, let's call them that way. And if they are more than 99, it means that the coil, that the transformer or the inductor is healthy. And what you see on screen right now is a healthy transformer. You got one big pulse and then it slowly decays until it reaches zero. And after like a fraction of a second, it will start again, send another pulse and measure count those little echoes again. Now let's see what happens when I'm shorting a secondary coil of the flyback. And there you go, the echoes have completely vanished. Actually, there is one big pulse, which is the one being sent by the ring tester. And then, I don't know, I can see two or three small echoes which are being dampened straight away. The ring tester is uh, reading seven, so obviously it must have a high resolution that I can see that on screen. But that's pretty clear that something is stopping those reflections, those echoes. And if I remove my short here, everything goes back as, as it was before. So that is how the ring tester works. Okay, well, this is the definition of don't do this at home. I would say the definition of don't do it. But anyways, I'm told this is safe. So what I've done, I have disconnected the anode lead from the CRT and it's uh, under this uh, glass bowl on a wooden surface for isolation. The idea is that we know or we think there is a short somewhere on this monitor by disconnecting the anode lead from the CRT we're basically disconnecting the high voltage or part of the high voltage circuit from the flyback and also the CRT itself or the high voltage section of the CRT. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use my multimeter to monitor the outputs of the power supply and if those outputs go back to what they're supposed to be, well, that is basically pointing at a fault into the flyback or unfortunately a fault with the CRT itself. There could be a short within the CRT. It's unlikely, but it's a possibility. But we tested the flyback with the ring test and the ring tester says the flyback is fine. So why are we doing this test? Now this particular flyback transformer, according to the schematics, has a couple of high voltage diodes inside. inside. And if those diodes are shorted, that would look as a short to the power supply. That's something the ring tester cannot test apparently. So by disconnecting the anode lead, I'm uh, removing that from the equation. And if my power supply comes back to life, that should mean that there is an issue with either the flyback or the CRT. At least I know it's in that direction. Okay, I'm ready to test. Let's begin with the 125 volts line. Let's uh, give it a go in three, two, one, go. Aha, uh -huh, look at that. We are 109, 110. I can see the power supply is kind of struggling a bit. It started a bit low and then it went up, but that is telling me that we found our problem because uh, previously it was around 60 volts, if I'm not mistaken. I'm ready to test the next line, which is, uh, I think it's supposed to be 26 volts. Three, two, one, go. And again, it's much better than before. It's 23, it's going up. I mean, you can definitely see there's still something wrong, but if you think about it, the high voltage output from the flyback is not just the high voltage for the CRT, it's also the focus and what's called the G2. So obviously that's probably still generating a short but it's not as bad as the, uh, the CRT high voltage supply so the power supply is struggling a bit but it's definitely much better than before and finally we have our 15.5 volts I think it is three two one go and again 14 it's it's getting there so yes these is uh, telling me that the issue is with either the flyback or it could be with the CRT itself now, what about that resistor that was uh, scorching hot before? Let's give it a go. I've got my thermal camera out in three, two, one, go. And yes, the resistor is still getting pretty hot. And uh, my understanding is the short is still there and that's um, caused by the, the G2 and the focus circuitry going to the uh, other part of the CRT. So the resistor is still affected, but uh, this test should tell me that the fault is with the flyback or the CRT itself. One other thing I discovered while looking around is that the top of the flyback transformer looks like swollen up a bit. Maybe something overheated inside and the plastic case got deformed? After all, if there is a short, that power has to go somewhere. 
I don't think it's supposed to look like that, and I don't think it was like that when I installed it. At least, it doesn't look like that from the footage of my previous repair. This might be consistent with the theory of the shorted high voltage diodes, and hopefully another clue towards a defective flyback transformer. And unfortunately, I have to end the video here. I know what you're thinking, I haven't repaired the monitor, we don't know what happened with that flyback, but unfortunately I had to return the monitor and someone else will complete the repair, so if I ever find out what happened to that monitor, I'll leave a comment down below in the uh, description section. So take a look, if you're watching this video, take a look at the description, uh, there might be uh, some extra information about the outcome of this repair. Now I know this is not the ideal ending, I, I would have loved to see whether the flyback was fixed in the monitor, but I just didn't want to throw away that footage with uh, the diagnostic of the weird deformed flyback and uh, and all the uh, the rest of the diagnostic. Uh, also, I wanted to show you this ring tester, which uh, I'm sure it will come very useful for some future videos. And don't don't worry, I have a couple of monitors here on the floor, IBM monitors which will need attention, and uh, I can guarantee on these two monitors I will be able to reach the end and show you what happened. For now, I hope you enjoyed this uh, part of the troubleshooting, and if you did, I'd appreciate a thumb up down below, and also consider subscribing to this channel if you like these kind of things. For now, I wish you a great day, I hope to see you again here soon on this channel for my next videos. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Bye-bye.